Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of the Mad Men Sports Podcast. To my left, we have Diamond Dave here. Dave, how are you? Yo, I'm good. Good as always. Good. You feeling well? You excited? Got that Memorial Day hangover. <laughs> hey, there we go. Zach, how are we doing? Very good. Good. So it looks like this week we're breaking down the Buffalo Bills defense. We've been kind of focusing a lot on the offenses. That's where we've seen our most problems over the years, but we thought we'd show some love. So... Let's start with position groups. How do you guys feel about the secondary? We'll start with the cornerback. Well, they really revamped it because, you know, over the last three years, they've had some really big problems at secondary. Um, you know, they had Stefan Gilmore, and he left, and then all of a sudden there's this huge hole at defense. And, and then they really went out there, and they, they traded back down in the 2016-17 draft. I, and then they, uh, they, they shied away from getting Patrick Mahomes and went ahead and got uh, Trey White, which was a little unknown at the time. Everyone was a little bit more excited about getting the second pick in the following year. But um, Trey turned out to be a stud, so I'm, I'm really happy with that. And Going into his uh, third season here, I'm excited to see him continue to be a shutdown corner and really take over You know, the, the division as maybe the top cornerback in the division. He does have Stephon Gilmore to rival him, rival him a little bit there. But uh, I think it would be really interesting to see how much he takes a leap in his third season. And then, obviously, you have the two, uh, you know, the, the down-home, you know, reliable safeties of Jordan Poyer and M- Micah Hyde. And you really have to appreciate what they've been able to give you in their short period of time here. And when they got here, no one really expected too much out of them because they didn't really know exactly what Jordan Poyer was going to provide with you. And Micah Hyde, he was a little bit of a name from Green Bay, but... You know, you you see a player like him on free agency. There must be something wrong with him, and I can't I can't think of one thing I'd change about him. So uh, we really come up with a question mark with cornerback two. Dave, what do you think about cornerback two this season? Well, I think our defensive backfield is probably the strongest position on our team. Actually, I think our safeties are very good. They're veterans, and they're just consistent. And that's what we need. Defensive back. Uh, cornerback number two, I big fan of Gaines that we got back from Cleveland, DJ Gaines, who was with us two years ago. Big fan of him. But I think it probably will be Kevin Johnson coming back from an injury. I think our nickel corner is going to be Taron Johnson, which was very good last year as a unknown rookie. Came on very strong, but I'm hoping Kevin Johnson pulls through. First round pick from Houston. I'm not sure what college, but first round pick from Houston. And he's with us now from injuries. Hopefully he comes back healthy and strong. And we could really use him. Yeah, something to say about Tredavious White. I mean, I'm certainly not saying anything new here, but I have to say he's one of the most underrated cornerbacks in the league. I mean, he gets snubbed from any accolades that are out there. All pro, pro bowl, he's never made it. Uh, I look for him to kind of prove the doubters wrong this year. So excited to see Trey White make his third season with the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, people you talk to say Levi and Wall- Levi Wallace will just stump in that role, but everyone forgets Taron Johnson was a starter for three years with Houston. EJ Gaines could easily fill that role, and we have a very good nickel corner in Taron Johnson. People need to keep an eye on him. I just got to keep that shoulder healthy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So for the cornerback two spot, it really is a revolving door for now. I'd like to see by August who really starts locking down that position. And I mean, it, it is a vital group because, like Jake was saying, Travis White has been kind of you know killing it under the radar lately. But I think it's kind of that time's over. I think it's time for him to really come out of his shell. And I think people are starting to take notice of the cornerback from Buffalo a little bit. He's been on you know some news outlets this off season. I think people are really taking notice and. He comes from DBU in his world. Uh, LSU is a great school, so I, I think people are starting to take notice of the LSU community in the defensive back scenario. And he <clears> teaches <throat> hockey, which is no slight on him. The problem we run into with White is it is going to be time for that stupid contract soon, so we have to start considering maybe re-signing him and giving him some big money because so far he earns it, but I don't know if he earns top corner money. He needs to step it up a notch this year. Uh, I would pay him top corner. It's money. probably the yeah. same with Poyer and Hyde though, because they're gonna they're gonna need some money soon too. So Bills are running into a situation where they're gonna have to start paying guys. <clears throat> they definitely are not struggling for cap next year. They're so not struggling, but, but that's what they should be doing this offseason. Bills are I falling think. into the scenario where it's it's time to go with Josh Allen on his rookie contract. That you you have this quarterback who's a little unknown and he's a little bit above average, and he can only get. I mean, he's definitely at his floor. He can only go higher. So. 
you got to win now, so to speak, because you have to pay these guys eventually, and eventually you'll have to have some cap casualties. So you got to really maximize your Josh Allen potential while he's still on this rookie contract. You guys know what I'm saying? Yeah, of course. Yeah, that's why I say that you got to do it now because you're coming up to young guys like Edmonds, and which we'll talk about soon, Josh Allen, who are all going to need contracts. Not yet. We have like three years until we need to do so, but now's the time to strike if you want these guys to be veterans and stay on the team. Yeah, of course. And speaking of Tremaine Edmonds, actually, let's flip over to the linebackers. Not much has changed this offseason in terms of new acquisitions for the linebackers. I mean, we still have our Matt Milano, Tremaine Edmonds, and Lorenzo Alexander, those kind of staples of the middle of the defense. Uh, any of you guys have any thoughts? Yeah, I got to reveal a secret to you guys. Oh, please. Matt Milano is my favorite Bill on the roster right now. I love the guy. I'm going to talk about him all season. Please. You can start right now. I, I was broken up when he got injured last year. I think he's a great linebacker. I think we should be talking about him more than Edmonds. Big fan of Edmonds, too. But Matt Milano, I, I think, is the real deal. And maybe you guys can type in on your comments and call me a homer or whatever, but I'm a huge fan of Matt Milano. As you should be, because he's a really high-motor guy. He, he's, he really fits the build for your weak side linebacker. And I really appreciate all he's done in his two years here. And I think... He, him, with the compliment of Tremaine Edmonds, will really uh, you know, assess the linebacker core and really take it into the future. I would have liked to see them kind of snatch a higher-end linebacker in the draft to kind of replace Lorenzo Alexander in the coming years, but I think you have one more year to do that. And, as, yeah, my thing is I don't want Milano to go the same route as Zach Brown or Preston Brown and any other linebacker that was here that accumulated a lot of tackles but then didn't show for it because now there are other teams. I want Milano to be here. Him and Edmonds need that kind of buddy relationship on linebacker. Yeah, something that I also want to say in regards to Matt Milano, he was a late-round draft pick. He was pick 163 in the fifth round. So getting that production from a fifth-rounder, I mean, that's beautiful. You can't ask for anything more, really. Yeah, him in the fifth round. I believe Taron Johnson was in the fourth round the year after. These guys have been really good at finding a late late uh, draft, like, you know, nuggets. So I think that this year's late draft, late draft nugget might come from the defensive end as well. At uh, Voshan Joseph, he's out of Miami, and I think he's a linebacker with a high motor. He fell in the draft because he was a little undersized, and he had a little bit of a couple knocks on him in the pre-draft process. But I really think that if they do plan on keeping it in-house to replace Lorenzo Alexander, because I imagine this is all his final year, correct, guys? Yeah, I would say so. That, that, that Joseph would be your replacement for him in the short term if you cannot draft someone. You know, in the future, they think they're going to build him up within house, which is a smart move. What's the injury Milano had at the end of the last year? I was too broken up to remember. I, I, I know it was a serious injury. I think he broke his leg or something, right? Yeah, I believe it was a tibia. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. You were talking about late round draft picks for this year, but I want to also shout out Tyrell Dotson out of Texas A and M. Uh, not much coming out from him. Uh, I mean, he doesn't seem to really make any splashes, but definitely look out for him in training camp. He might make a couple splashes. Is he outside or inside linebacker? He is outside linebacker. That's not bad. I will say I'm looking forward to seeing Tremaine Edmonds in his second year. He got a lot of tackles last year, but didn't make a whole lot of plays. I would like to see a little step up there. I know he's a rookie. I'll back off. One thing we do need is depth in the linebacker position. Hopefully Stanford, Thompson, Deion Lacey, who's a special teams guy, they all step it up and can play more this year. And the rookies that you guys talked about. And also, we do need special teams to step it up, too. So hopefully those guys that we all talked about step it up a notch. Yeah, special teams definitely needs some attention in this offseason. And we struggled quite mightily last year in turn. We had a couple punt returns for touchdowns. So Hopefully we got our guy, though, Andre Roberts. We, he he kind of killed us in the season, so him and flipped him, him around. And him and Murphy. Reverse. Hit the reverse card and brought him in. I think Murphy's toes. He's got to make the team first. Yeah, yeah, we're so. talking about defense today, boys. Uh, I I think we've covered enough for the linebacker position. Let's go to the defensive line. I mean, that's where we've seen most of our shakeup this year. So what do you guys think? We just got done talking about Jerry Hughes. So hopefully he's – him and Lorenzo are like the leaders of that defense right now. So he, he got a big contract, guard. yeah. Uh, let me ask you guys this. Who starts at – who takes – the defensive tackle starting position. Do you think that the guy we did Ed Oliver? I mean, that's I agree with you, Dave. That's such a question to wrap your head around. But I think Ed Oliver is going to be day one starter. Uh, what the Buffalo Bills do is they t- they have a rotating kind of thing going on. So I don't think you're going to see one player three downs. You're going to see a multitude. You're going to see 
Ed Oliver, Harrison Phillips, Jordan Phillips, Star. I mean, you're not going to see one person out there. So. Yeah, I mean, we were talking the other day, all three of us, when we were in the car, that Star Latulia, I wasn't a fan. I was ripping on him. And Zach said that he does exactly what he gets paid to do. You look at his stats last year, I'm looking now. He had like 13 tackles. That's it. That's all he had next to Kyle Williams. Kyle Williams had a good year, though, so he did open up holes. I just wanted to see Star do something else. Yeah, Zach, do you want to kind of elaborate on what Dave's talking about? Yeah, Star got paid a lot of money to come here from Carolina. But what he did in Carolina was what he did last year. And everyone kind of knocked on him because he only did have 13 tackles and he wasn't a sack monster. I think we're all used to a little bit the bigger defensive tackle coming in in Buffalo and like Marcel Darius and Kai Williams. And all we have four linemen that are out there trying to get the quarterback, which isn't really Star Latule's uh, really forte. He's more of a block eater. So what he'll do is he'll take the center and he'll take the guard and he'll eat their blocks, which frees up the defensive end and or the opposite side defensive tackle so they can get more of a pass rush, which is something the Bills really do need to improve on this year, whether or not Starla Tule is doing his job. Or so last year they only had 36 sacks, which is really low for the Bills because, I mean, it's not low for, I mean, it's in the bottom eighth of the league or bottom fourth of the league, which is pretty crazy. Wouldn't you guys agree? Yeah. You can't have that few of sacks in that good of a defensive backfield. you gotta, you got to really help out the back D-backs a little bit. Yeah, could you imagine what our defense would be like if we can start pressuring the quarterback more? Yeah, well, hopefully I think Ed Oliver will help with that. I, I, I hear you. We do need sacks, and Trent Murphy was paid a lot of money to do so, and now Jerry Hughes is too. Yeah, I wanted to touch on Trent Murphy. I mean, he was one of those big acquisitions last year when we were talking about Starla Tulele and Trent Murphy. You, you hadn't heard anything about him. He struggled with injuries all last yeah, he year. Yeah, he had a history so. of being in. He had a good second half of the year. I think I think I don't have it in front of me, but I think he ended up with seven sacks really? for the games he played. There are a lot of garbage time sacks. Right. But again, we just talked about this on Thursday. Shaq Lawson needs to step it up. He wants to be paid, he, uh, either this team or another team. He needs to step it up and at least get double digits for sacks. Listen, that's fantastic. Fingers crossed. Yeah. I need Shaq Lawson. He's the guy we need that needs to be the young guy, step it up, get the pressure back there. Listen, with Josh Rosen, jo- Sam Darnold, and Tom Brady in your division, you need to put the quarterback on his butt. So be getting into the backfield and really pressuring him, making the quicker throw, especially with the two rookie or not rookies anymore, the two sophomore quarterbacks in your division, the pass rush is everything, and they really hit it home with that Oliver. He's who it, and the OTA has got nothing but praise on his high motor, which is something that they really do need because you really didn't get much out of the defensive line last year in my, in terms of sacks. So if you're able to get Trent Murphy going, Shaq Lawson had a great second half of the year. Jerry Hughes is always on the quarterback right there. Lorenzo Alexander was second on the def- on the team in the sacks, and he's a linebacker. So you really need more out of the defensive linemen to kind of step up and help out the defensive backs and the linebackers kind of do their job a little bit better. Because when those guys are working hard, everyone else's job's a little easier. Yeah. Well, uh, listen, we went through the whole Buffalo Bills defense. How do you guys feel? I feel like that if <clears throat> our defensive backs continue to do what they do, Edmund steps it up, and Milano stays healthy, and Lorenzo Alexander just keeps being the consistent player he is, even though age will start showing. Our, all we need is our defensive line to pour the pressure on, and we could... I think we ended with the top 10. We could be back in the top 10, maybe top 5. Interesting, Zach. Any final thoughts? And, and I think our coaching staff knows that, and that's nice. They're comf- they're confident in the defensive mm-hmm. unit. This is kind of the anchor of the team. So with Sean McDermott really knowing what he's doing, he's got a great assistant with Le- Leslie Frazier there, a bunch of experience in the defensive coaching staff. I think that this defense can't go wrong. I mean, I'm going to knock on wood, of course, but... This defense really can only take us another step forward, which is really important because they did get younger on the defensive line, and they did get more consistency out of keeping guys like Jordan Phillips on the team, who learned the system towards the second half of the season. And now you kind of have to have a battle for the second cornerback position, which is what these guys preached on, is how important for this team to grow is just position battles all across the board. So I'm really interested in seeing Tremaine Evans in the second year, the second cornerback battle happen, and the defensive line kind of get faster and stronger. Oh, that's awesome, guys. Wonderful. Uh, Zach, and are you going to introduce us to a new coach today? Yes. Time for a new coach, guys. Who isn't really a new coach, believe it or not? Oh. So the offensive line coach this year is Bobby Johnson, who Cody Ford praised about post-draft, saying he was excited to come to Buffalo because of Bobby Johnson. And let me tell you a little bit about Bobby Johnson. He played wide receiver and quarterback at Clemson in college, and then after college, he went on to coach at Furman University, where he coached there for eight years, 
And then he had such a good year in his final year that Vanderbilt came in and snatched him up where he was the head coach there for eight more years. In 2010, he was on the Bills coaching staff as the offensive line assistant coach. Kind of under the radar, didn't really go well with Chan Gailey. After that year, he in 2012, he went on to Jags tight end coach. Now this guy's getting around the league. Listen to these next moves. Then after the Jags, he went to the Lions. After the Lions, he went to the Raiders. After the Raiders, just la- two years ago, last year that is, the Colts had him as the offensive line assistant. Now everyone remembers that Colts, Colts offensive line completely revamped after last season. You guys remember that? Did good with young players. Yeah. So now that the offensive line position's overhauled at the Bills, it's time to really see if Bobby Johnson can really put his you know foot on the pedal and get these guys rolling. This guy's been all over the place. How old is he? Oh, uh, he's he's up there in age, but jeez, he's still got some motor in him. I, I I mean, I've I've seen him in interviews. He's got a lot of swag on him. He's got a lot on his shoulders this season trying to revamp the whole positioning. So hopefully he makes it well, and good luck, Bobby Johnson. Yeah, listen, Bobby Johnson's got a lot of work turning around this offensive line from last year. So fingers crossed, Bobby. We hope for the best. Uh, if you don't, we'll be out for your keep, head. Keep, keep Josh healthy. Yeah, I think he's got a lot more talent around him than the last guy did, too. So I, I'm very comfortable with him in the at him at the helm. But you got to get those guards to get holes for the running backs. Got to get those holes. Got to get those holes, baby. Well, I mean, that's going to wrap it up for us today. Uh, if you could uh, definitely give us a follow on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. You know the deal. Any questions, you can leave them on YouTube. Yeah, if you want to leave us any comments, any suggestions, certainly leave them in the comments on YouTube. Like and subscribe there as well. And gentlemen, ladies, you have a fantastic Memorial Day. Take care, guys.